I have to go to the start of my notes. They're completely nonsensical. Oh my god, wow, this does not make any sense. <laughs> darling, I am worrying. <laughs> yeah, I think darling should for sure be worrying. Yeah. I'm progressively more worrying for, for <laughs> darling throughout this, this movie. <laughs> How many times did our right... Oh god. I think like half of my notes are just, just different versions of darling, darling are you I worried? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cynical Cinephiles Podcast, where uh, we are cynical, and I am a cinephile. Just just me. Only me. The, the titles lie. Uh, I am joined today by my co-host. Hi, my name is Caitlin. Um, I don't know anything about movies, and I barely like watching them. And I'm pretentious and love watching and talking about them and talking about them and talking a lot about things that I hate and love and love and hate. So that's basically what we're doing here. Every week, one of us will pick a movie. Sometimes it'll be good. Other times it'll be Caitlin's picks. And it's just... (laughs) (laughs) However... For this first week, for this first episode, uh, we're actually doing a movie that kind of is a a mutual pick between us, right? Yes. Uh, If you've seen the title of the episode of the podcast, or just see, if you're you're a a video viewer, seeing us visually, that's also the sign right behind us, we are watching Don't Worry Darling. Yes. Uh, We just saw it. um, And wow. Wow. This uh, movie. It's like a movie. It, it feels like a movie. <laughs> um, one thing that I do want to point out before we really get started um, is that if you have not seen Don't Worry Darling or you just don't want any spoilers, um, don't be here. Not right the now. place to be. It just isn't. That ain't it, Pam. <laughs> this is not the podcast for you. Uh, at least not this episode. Hopefully, if you're listening to this months down the line, years down the line, which if you haven't seen this movie after years, like that's kind of on you. But Or if you just don't care about the movie and want to hear spoilers, yeah, we'll spoil it for you. That sounds fantastic. But if there's any comments that are like, uh, spoiler alert. This is it. This is your spoiler alert. <laughs> this is the one you're talking about, <laughs> hypothetically. So yeah, this movie did indeed feel like a movie. I think oh, uh, Harry Styles was God. right with that one. I, I honestly do have to give it to him. It, it did genuinely, like, I could kind of see what he meant by it. I can't yeah. give him too much flack. It felt I can like give a, him some it, flack. It did feel like a movie. It, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> it was cinema. Uh, it was, uh, I wouldn't call it good cinema, uh, but I also wouldn't call it the worst thing I've ever seen. That's fair. What were your, like, general impressions, thoughts, etc.? Going into the movie or afterwards? After the movie. Okay. Like, just, if you were to kind of just give me your take, like, generally speaking, before we go into the nitty gritty, what would it be? Um, it was good until it wasn't. (laughs) I actually thoroughly enjoyed it until about 30 minutes from the end of the movie. Um, and then once they revealed what the big twist was, um, I suddenly did not like it very much anymore, which we can talk about more. What about you? It's actually funny how eerily similar our takes are i know i really thought this this first episode was going to be more of a hot take (laughs) i I will say i think uh i started disliking or or losing interest in the movie a little sooner than you did i'd say about the halfway point i believe the specific sequence in which it started tapping me out was uh during like kind of the the um what would it be like the banquet sequence and then when uh Olivia Wilde's character and Florence Pugh, they were like having that thing. She's like confessing that she left to go see the Oh, went right after the situation where they just randomly threw in Vita, like, or what is her name? Vita Von Tees? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. For just no reason. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That, right after that. No, it was just that that discussion. Then that was following, like, right after that was, like, the dinner scene. Yeah. I fucking hated the dinner scene. I ain't gonna lie. It was oh, one of the, probably my it least. It was cringe. I just, it was so bad. But, it, but the thing is, is before those couple of scenes... I was actually like surprised at how much I was loving yeah. the movie. Like, like I literally, I have my notes that I was taking blindly in the theater, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure multiple times I just write, "I love this." Uh, let's see, yeah, this is peak. Uh, a bunch of other random things. Oh my god, none of this makes any sense. Seven minutes in, I love this, um, and then slowly, you know, as things progress, I lost interest. Yeah, uh, immensely, specifically during that scene. So generally, yeah, I'd say we have very similar takes on that matter. Yes, um, I do also want to point out that we will be discussing all of the controversy around don't worry darling um but until we get to that point i did want to ask you uh what did you think of harry styles official acting debut i'm not gonna lie i didn't hate it as much as i thought i would i know you from the vibe <laughs> you gave me you did not seem to have liked it i didn't i honestly didn't like hate it like i don't think it was amazing or breathtaking or anything but it was not like offensive to me like i wasn't like oh this is a disgrace against act this is this is not cinema like i was like yeah it's fine there was one scene i actually did really kind of like from him which scene was that it was a scene where he was like crying and saying like i'm so sorry like it felt kind of yeah awkward, but it was like i don't know it, it was it was a very unique vibe where it didn't feel like necessarily like authentic tears but it felt like pathetic but like in yeah. a, like that was the intention like yeah, it yeah, yeah. felt like it was like his most pathetic moment and i was like holy shit dude he's he's capturing the vibe there like, yeah that's like it was i liked that scene a lot actually i'm sorry I have to agree with you. I think so. At the beginning of the movie, um, I actually was pleasantly surprised. Um, and then after thinking back on it, all of the acting that I thought he was doing a decent job in was all of him just being obsessed with Florence Pugh, <laughs> which I was like, me Pretty too. easy. Yeah. Yeah. Like not difficult not... <laughs> to be obsessed with Florence Pugh. Not <laughs> a huge challenge. Incredible. Of course. Um, but then I felt like once the movie progressed and there were actual scenes between them that required, had more depth. <laughs> required uh, chemistry. <laughs> required, I wouldn't. I <laughs> no, I think they did have. I wasn't offended by their chemistry like Florence Pugh carried a lot of that I will yeah say. She, she was did. very good at selling it I think. right she, well she's just incredible at everything of she course. does one of the best actresses of like the current generation oh for like, sure like, top like three maybe, yeah uh, but anytime there was like an emotional scene between Alice and Jack I thought that Harry Styles really did not do very well. As mm. soon as there was a scene that required any sort of emotional depth from his part, I mean, it, I think it was very clear who was carrying that. I will say the, the one thing I did think was hilarious with, like, I guess his acting and just general demeanor was the scenes where he was supposed to be, like, upset. Like, his his angry frowning face is the... He, like, looks like Grumpy Cat. Like, that's literally his face. And I'm yeah. just, like... And he's got this huge frown. Like, who actually frowns when they're mad? Like, mm, I'm angry and oh, I'm upset. Mm. I don't know. It just, I just... It I feel bizarre. like, also, he doesn't know how to say words. <laughs> <laughs> Like when I heard him say the word, the word that sticks out specifically to me was opportunity. Mm. When I heard him say the word opportunity, I was like, "What is happening?" Oh yeah, he he's he's an interesting fellow. I mean, he could have had a worse like big role debut, I think, but yeah. also nothing. He could have had a better one. Yeah, definitely could have had a better one. There's actually a book I've been reading recently or that I finished recently that I think if they made that into a movie, he would have an incredible role in it that he would do really well in. But that's it was the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and there's mm -hmm. a rock star in it. And I think he would do a really good job playing the rock star. But that being said, he fell flat in this performance for me, especially knowing that we could have had Shia LaBeouf. 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of, he's a very controversial figure, but he also is a good actor. And I think Although, he would have brought a lot to that role. I will say though, I honestly, I think I actually wrote this down in my notes at some point. I don't know if Shia LaBeouf could have played like, well, most of, most of I uh, was in Jack. Yeah. Like, Cause I don't know, like that kind of like, he's not a very like cleanly shaven, like put together. Like even if he did like was actually cleanly shaven and like had his hair done and all that. I don't think he could have like had the same look or demeanor that Harry Styles had mm. just cause like that's not Shia LaBeouf's vibe. However, I will say the um, grungy incel version of Jack, I, honestly I think thought, could have totally been Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I think that Harry <laughs> Styles actually did a really good job with that. I was, yeah, I mean. He, I was he pleasantly surprised. Did He changed his demeanor. He was an yeah. incel. Yeah. He, he, he did and the he thing. looked gross. Like it was really. I was repulsed. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was disgusting. Um, I will say that at the very beginning of the movie, Olivia Wilde gave me the ick. Mm. Um, I really was not a fan, and then I felt like my feelings about that were being influenced by the huge amounts of controversy that came out around her. Yeah. Um, but then towards the end of the movie, I was like, man, damn, she's a really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with her. Okay, I, that was a lot of my notes were just me being weirded out that she's like a main character in the movie. Yeah, because like that's weird. Like it I, is at least weird. I think I don't know. Like it's one thing to a cameo, but the thing is, she is like one of the first people you see in the movie. Uh huh. Like the first like couple of shots is her like dancing with Florence Pugh, and I was like, wait, wait, the, you're you're the one who's direct. Wait, what? And then I was like, okay, so maybe she's just here for this one scene. It's like a fun, it's weird to put this as a first scene, whatever. Then the next scene, she's still there. Yeah. And I was like, okay, it's going on a little long. Okay. It's a little, a little strange. Next scene, she's still, she's there for like the first like 25 minutes of the movie, like almost every scene. And I was like, what? And like all my notes are just, why is she still, get, why is Olivia Wilde still <laughs> here? Or, aren't you supposed to be directing the movie? <laughs> like, what, what? not that you can't direct yourself, because obviously, like in TV, especially, that happens all the yeah. time. But like, it is weird to, as a director for a film, cast yourself as one of the lead roles, and then like with all the excessive shots just like lingering on her and giving her like solemn stares off. And I'm like, yeah. this is like a 15 second long shot of you staring. This is a vanity project. That was the vibe I was getting. Yeah. And I, I you know, I love Olivia Wilde. I think she, her last film, Booksmart, I was a huge fan of. I One of the reasons I was really excited for this movie. And I do think the direction on this movie was also spectacular. I but. was honestly impressed um, by the direction. Not that I know fucking anything about, like, official direction. <clears throat> but I did, like, a lot of the, like, camera angles and, like, choices that were made. I thought that it was really strong. And then about towards the middle, middle end, I felt like it lost that direction and yeah. like it lost the beautiful camera angles. And I don't know if that was an intentional choice, but it certainly didn't feel intentional. It felt awkward. It, it felt very awkward. And again, I feel like I know a lot more about movies just over the course of our friendship. <laughs> um, but like, Jesus, I don't know. Can we talk about the plot twist? Can we explain what yes. happened so we can actually like delve into okay, this? Okay, summarize the plot twist for us. Okay, so <laughs> essentially we have this beautiful, wonderful town um, called Victory um, that is being ran by Chris Pine. <laughs> oh god and it honestly made me want to be like a 70s housewife i was like really? i was like period bestie like let's go <laughs> um that sounds like an amazing life and then you find out that jack has essentially kidnapped his girlfriend to put her in a mind control situation um <laughs> and that when he goes to work He's actually going to work in the real life to be able to afford for them to still live in yeah. victory <laughs> and taking care of her body to make sure she doesn't die. Um, which I thought that was the worst plot twist, especially nowadays. And I'm sorry if I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, but I feel like it needs to be said why the fuck is it always a simulation? 
I yeah. feel like the simulation is tired. We're done with it. We're good. We don't need, like, if this is supposed to be about warning about the effects of technology or fucking whatever, we've been there. We've done that. We all saw the Matrix. I mean, I haven't seen the Matrix, but we all saw the Matrix. <laughs> well, I would, of all the things you could say, you're like, we all saw the Matrix. Not me, but. Not me. You but need to watch the Matrix. People. Oh, my goodness. Most people have seen The Matrix, and yeah. even I knew that much. I was like, this feels very... Matrix. Like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's it's also funny, because, at, at again, I really... At one point, I honestly want to go through my notes, just because they were just so crackhead. Like, they, they're they nonsensical and hilarious. But at one point, I was just writing down possible theories for what was happening, like, at the beginning of the movie. And at one point, I think I literally... Like, Simulation... No, nah, it's too obvious. Oh. <laughs> like I literally dismissed that, and I like it took me a while to get back to that because I was so certain that that wasn't what that they were doing. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 that's too, that's too smooth brain for this. I was like, no, this is good. <laughs> definitely trying to go with something deeper. Yeah. Is it the apocalypse? And they're they're actually like in a dome hiding them well, away. That's, that's from... kind of what I was thinking mm. because it was giving me Fallout Four vibes. Yeah. And so I was like, maybe. I th no, now I wish that's what they would have gone with because an apocalypse would have been so much cooler. So, okay, here's my question. I don't know if you, you figured this out because I couldn't, I didn't, at least it didn't stand out to me as, I, did, I didn't figure it out. What was the plane? Because like at one point I there was a crashing don't plane. fucking no. Yeah. So it, this is... Uh, this is what I'm talking about when earlier we try not to talk to each other after the movie. We try not to say anything to each other. We were in like silence for most we, of our car ride home. <laughs> but we let a few things slip. And one of the things that I let slip was that after the plot twist happened, I had way more questions than answers. Um, which feels like that shouldn't be the case because of how obvious the plot twist was. Um, but I will say that one of the plot holes was that. Yeah, I don't like understand. Like, what was it? Like a rendering error, or it's just such a strange thing to bring such heavy focus to. Like, oh my gosh, there's this plane. It's the entire reason she ends up over there in the first place, and the right. entire reason everything happens. And we, they don't like. Unless I, maybe we missed it. Maybe it's like some subtle thing, and there's like a reason. But like, as far as I Please saw, let us I did know in not. The comments below. Yeah, no. Yeah, let let us know, is because if, if if there is anything, or if or if it's really, nothing. Yeah. But the other thing they put a heavy emphasis on if someone, if the husband dies in the simulation, then he dies in real life. But then Margaret kills herself. Mm. So is she dead in real life? I assume. Because the, all they said was that if they didn't say if someone dies. Yeah. They said if the husband dies. Also, why? Okay, and I think you just need to explain this to me because I feel like mm. this should have been obvious, but I did not get it. Yeah. Um, Frank's wife stabs him at the end. Yeah. Why? I does guess she, she's is she trying his... to get out of the simulation, or I... does she want to take over the simulation? Terrific question. No idea. I, I did wonder a little bit about that. I also just thought the scene itself was just so weird. Because, like, I, I already think Chris Pine's character was honestly, my like, the worst part of the entire movie, in my opinion. I fucking hated everything. Aside from, like, his first scene, everything he did was so comical and goofy and stupid that I yeah. just hated him. But then it's like, if you're going to spend so much of your fucking movie on this guy... Then what, what, you're, all you're going to do at the end is just be like, oh, no. And he got stabbed. That was and it. And he got he had stabbed. No, no relevance to, to anything. And also, my other issue was that was with Olivia Wilde's character. Yes. That literally, I had a just, massive mm. issue because they tried to pull a whole fucking WandaVision on us. <laughs> and I was like, WandaVision has been there. They did that. <laughs> There's a whole movie now. They literally got one of the actors from WandaVision too, so it's like extra on top of that. Who? Uh, the guy, uh, the guy who he plays someone in like Vision's uh, workplace in WandaVision. Oh, I don't fucking know. Um, Anyways, damn. But she Justice essentially, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um. Olivia Wilde's character admits at the end of the movie that she has known this whole time that it was a simulation and that she doesn't care because she lost her children in the real life. And so through this simulation, she gets to stay with her kids. And what? Can we, <laughs> can we write? Like, okay, 
before I get flack for this, obviously being a mother is incredibly important and that losing a child must be the most insurmountable grief. I am not trying to make any commentary on that. What I am making commentary (laughs) on is writing women who are mothers and their only character description is Mm. being a mom. Yeah. Her character was like, no, I, even being a mom was not even that important to her until like the very end of the movie. Yeah. She was just nothing. And that's why I thought it was also so strange that she was in so much of the movie. Because I'm like, you're the director. It like, feels like she just wrote a character for her to do nothing for like 45 minutes. To just in like total look hot. Yeah. And like smoke cigarettes. It was that just... red hair on her is incredible. That's fair. That She was born to be a redhead. Yeah. I don't care. She, I don't know what color hair she has right now, but she should go back to red. That was a great color on her. But that being said, what the fuck, bro? It, oh my God. I don't even, it's, it's just, it's bizarre. It is, it, the, the thing is, it's so funny because I feel like the first half of the movie is just, it's so well made. It feels almost art housey. Right, where it's just like they'll have these like interjections yeah. of like these flashes of these really cool like yeah. symbolism. There's a lot of really interesting themes that you can kind of like pick up on. Doesn't end up going anywhere in the second half, but in the first half, there's a lot of interesting stuff to dissect about like suburbia and like the ideal woman and like yeah. Marilyn Monroe and shit like that. You know, all the heavy hitters, all the little notes to check. But it, like, I think there is like a lot of stuff there. The the kind of horrorish, thrillerish scenes. There's some really effective ones. I got very freaked out many times same uh and then the second half just hits you they with should have leaned more into the horror aspect it, it's really weird too because it's like the first half was so horror scary it really i was unsettled a lot and yes. then the second half comes and it's just so goofy it's it's so goofy oh my it, it's really from that dinner scene particularly onwards because that's when chris pine comes in and you're like okay let's see what his deal is because we haven't really gotten much we've gotten weird stares from him constant yes. stares a, like just a weird aggressive like, skip aggressive <laughs> amounts and then he, he finally we get the conversation between him and, and florence pugh's character and he basically her like encourages her to like try to break the simulation but then like that's <laughs> never explained yeah what's his motivation there what i found the funniest though is that he literally was like he was basically he, he comes up to her and he's like oh, i knew you were spe-. he was like acting like they're Batman and, and the Joker. Right. Like, that was literally, I'm like, bro, you <laughs> don't even, what? What are you, what is this relationship? He's like, we mean so much. We're adversaries now. We're two minds playing the same game. <laughs> like, are we watching the same movie, dude? You, you've barely spoken and she is not that intelligent. And, and then she he, has not done that much. Yeah, she, you're not, and then they have the whole, the one table scene where they're supposed to be playing mind games and it's just like so oh stupid. It's just her being like, did you notice these things? And then he's just like gaslighting more. And then he's like, yeah, that was pathetic. And I was like, yeah, it was. Why did you make us 10 minutes of that stupid scene? You're not Batman and the Joker. You're just two random people. What? What? Yeah. What is this? Yeah. It was bizarre. Okay, one other thing I want to say about the twist, though. <laughs> um, just, I, I want to just further just bring attention to the fact that it's was completely tonally different from like everything else in the yes. movie. Like again, we're talking about how it goes into this goofy tone. And when they first like cut to Florence Pugh in like a nurse's costume and like all that, I was actually kind of intrigued. A doctor's again. costume. Was, oh, what she said. She was an MD, bro. It was Just because like, she's a woman, you assume yeah, I, she's. I, a I realized the mis- <laughs> it was my bad. This is my bad. I ain't gonna lie. I well, her hospital job mm-hmm. in the blue, like whatever. Scrubs. Doctor, scrubs. That's what that is. She's wearing the scrubs. And I was very invested in that scene. I yes. Was like, I was like, this, holy shit. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck is... And then you see fucking Jack as a weird bearded loser. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? What the so fuck is happening? So much cool shit. I was ready. I was like, is this movie going to make me care about it again after that stupid dinner stuff? Are we going to care? <laughs> and then they, they they cut away from it. They go back to the world. I'm like, okay, interesting. I'm, I'm waiting for it. They cut back to it. And then it's just a bunch of exposition dumps. And they're like, oh, yeah, he's actually like an incel. And he, he wanted like a perfect housewife. And uh, he put yeah. her in the... They're literally just like laying on exposition. And it's like so fucking... Like, 
I wouldn't have even been opposed to the simulation necessarily if it had been like, let's say a like corporation, like a big entity who is like controlling. All yeah, of but it. that's been used. But I like, do think, I think it was that it would more fit with the themes. I, the, the thing is, like the themes are all about like the copy paste like suburbia and how they're all supposed to be exactly the same. And they're all doing like and that stuff I is think... like an institutional. Chris Pine is like the guy running all this anyway. Yeah. But then it's like. It's just him being like an incel, and then like that's there's no like connection to any of the I think previously the, established. What themes, it was really. trying to say is that uh, Jack, as a character, obviously could not provide for his family that he created, and so instead of stepping up in the real world and becoming less of a mediocre white man, <laughs> what he did instead was essentially kidnap his wife. Were they even make, married? I don't know if they were married. I, I, I honestly got the vibe that they were just like dating and living together. Yeah. And that like they were on the rocks and he was like, well, this is going shitty. How about I brainwash you and make yeah. you my wife? Yes. And essentially took her out of her job mm. where she was an experienced professional and she was doing a bunch of really good work and make him in this like toxic masculinity make him the breadwinner you know yeah i, I just think very weird it's it's i think what what didn't work for me is it's like you have to suspend your disbelief to a certain point i think if there's like a bigger conspiracy surrounding something or if they showed more of that i can more so believe like oh yeah this big company or this influential person like made the simulation i know more of that like there's a reason for this to exist but all we see is just like this random guy somehow getting access to this technology this incredible and, technology yeah and like hypnotizing her and keeping her eyes open like we don't know how he got any of this we see him on the computer I wish it at was one a point cult. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Like, that kind of shit. Like, if they had explored more of that, it probably would not have felt nearly as ridiculous and stupid as it yeah. did. But it just, it felt so strange to me just because they don't explore that. No. All we know is that this random incel somehow got a hold of this technology and put her in a simulation. Like, it's just, and it's all so How did fast. she get into the simulation? Yeah, How just, did, also, that goes back to some of the plot holes I had with it being a simulation. Mm -hmm. So when she kind of starts to break free from the simulation, she undergoes shock treatment, which is when yeah. we get the flashback. Did they do that to her real body or to her fake body? That's a good question. Because Man. that doesn't make sense. Also, hmm. towards the end, she was like, just looks at one of the other wives and was like, and suddenly now the other wives know they're in a simulation, or do they know? Uh, what is happening? Yeah. Also, what flashbacks are sh is she getting? Is she waking up? Like, when she starts having these flashbacks, when the walls close in, when all of this beautiful mm. artistic things are happening, is that glitches in this system? What? Or is that... what? Is making her go crazy. Is that her own yeah. brain that's creating these? Trying to make her like scream herself awake? Like, I think it's like maybe because they had like the voiceover of Chris Pine through a lot of that. And I think they played that when she was first going in the simulation. So I also, I, I think maybe it was like the hypnosis stuff that they yeah, played to like, how hypnotize did, her. Or how something. did she get into the simulation? Great how question. did, does she have family in the real world who maybe, I don't know, concerned that they <laughs> haven't seen their daughter, sister, friend? I mean, if she is on her name badge, going back to the whole doctor thing, on her name badge, it says MD. So, like, is there no one at the hospital who may be like, huh. Is she, like, work shifts and stuff, and then she's just gone? She was working, like, 30 hours in a row, and then now she's just disappeared. Like, what's the explanation for that? Like, I... Yes. Why yeah. does it kill them in the real life if they die in the simulation is it because your brain shuts off <laughs> i wanted to see so funny to i me. wanted to see a scene um, where also who put in that iv that she was mm. under because she was wearing those compression socks and the iv to like keep her alive and he was like dribbling water droplets into her mouth yeah. and like did he do that all himself or did someone co did he is call someone somebody? coming <laughs> also if he really can't hold a job what kind of job is paying for this? That is also a That's good, a lot good of question. fucking care that Just, their bodies need to be under for them to be in this kind of simulation, at least as how the movie provided it to be. Just a lot of questions. That I are had left so many unanswered. questions. I also think that's what dissatisfied me about the ending. 
uh, is that like, you know, we didn't see her wake up. Exactly. And the thing is, is normally for like certain movies, I, I don't, I'm not inherently opposed to like having the movie end before even seeing her get out of the simulation. But the thing is that would be if they hadn't made such a focus on showing us her outside of the simulation for all of those exposition scenes. I don't care. Like the ending is just, it, it just ends. And you're like, wait, but like, is there going to be like a real conclusion? Like we have a couple shots of her and Harry Styles doing different things they show the poster shot as, like she, one of the final I shots i even and... think it would have been amazing if she like woke up and she like tore the things off her eyes and she like looked over and he was there and he was dead yeah like that would have like anything more to just give us something we heard her her gasping for air and, and that also was it. it was like a big thing for like they were saying olivia wilde's character was saying that they're gonna come for your body in the real world like they're gonna come and get you yeah. and kill you in the no, real yeah, world that, that, mm -hmm. and then there was no payoff for that whatsoever literally that's actually i think a big part of why that ending just doesn't because they, they do so much to set up like what's gonna happen when she wakes up especially with that where mm -hmm. all of her running is to run and you expect she's gonna have to run in the real world as well because they're coming for her real body apparently yeah but uh the movie does not follow Chekhov's gun it does not no. fulfill anything that it sets up really uh no. also i just wanted to note uh just because you you mentioned the whole stupid if you die in the simulation yeah you die, uh you probably won't get this but for anyone who who's seen sort of online and, and that who knows how stupid that that is um i hate sort of online with passion anyone who follows me obviously knows this <laughs> i obsess over it a lot but uh i just found that hilarious just because that that's like one of the most memeable things from that that i'm always making fun of like that whole concept and yeah. then they just did it in this and i was like it's literally just they're just doing the sort of online oh, jesus fucking christ <laughs> that's so stupid it's <laughs> so i think overall i think we can say um the story left a lot to be desired for us it did um yeah it was not great it was not wonderful <laughs> uh i was worried <laughs> Dar i was worried for Dar <laughs> by the way they never said that the name of the title in the movie i was a little sad about that and also he never called well, her darling he never once called her he called her baby but he also, he did say don't worry, like, a lot. But he said he would call her baby and not darling. And I was so disappointed. Yeah. I was like, come on, give me the name. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's move back to some of the more, like, uh, technical, technical aspects. Technical aspects. Okay. That's the word I was thinking of. Uh, like cinematography, for example. Okay. Or things of that nature. Cinematography was great. Yeah. I, mean, I, I yeah. honestly thought that it was beautiful. Um, I had no issues with the cinematography. I honestly thought... And I think you're going to have a different opinion than me, but mm. I really liked the soundtrack. I thought- that No, I love the soundtrack. What do okay, you mean? Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were going to like it or not. No, I, I really liked the it. chanting. Absolutely. I thought that that was incredible, but I, you know, it would have made more sense if it was like, I don't know, a cult or mm -hmm. something else. But um, I thought that that was very effective. It did a really good job at like raising my blood pressure and like mm -hmm. make me anxious. Oh, yeah. No, the, okay, the thing is, the sound design, I think, was honestly one of the highlight, the like, the biggest highlights of the movie. Mm -hmm. Between both the soundtrack and, like, score mm -hmm. and the actual, like, literal design of the sound effects and everything. Uh, with, like, the, the music in the background, the score, I loved that they would take, like, sound clips of, like, her gasping or something and then turn that into a whole track. Like, that's, like, kind of what that changing yeah. is. Almost, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense for a simulation because it's, like, glitching and repeating. <laughs> My favorite was very early on in the movie when they have like a fly buzzing by or like a bee buzzing by and it buzzes once and then it repeats like zzz, zzz, zzz. Yeah. And it, just keep, it doesn't stop. It just keeps looping. And they turn that into like a whole musical thing. And like that every- was beautiful. I know. And it's, and like you said with like the, the chanting or like the, the, clearly like there's a vocal like making like sounds like uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 but like turned into like a whole musical track and it really does unsettle you. Like I, every time yeah. I was like, Oh, and then the glass is pressing in as that's playing. You're like, Oh my God. It's like, yeah, just, it it's freaky. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It, it. it was phenomenal. And then the sound design itself was just like, just terrific. Like every, Oh my God. Every sound hit like a truck, man. I don't know. Like it's just, Oh, it was very, very well thought out. It they was. Knew the, the, the sound of the film was its best asset, in my opinion. I I would agree. I think that the cinematography was beautiful. The, mm -hmm. the music was beautiful. Um, one thing that did fall very flat for me, though, was the costuming. Mm. And I will say it is for one reason 
and one reason only. Um, it is not Florence Pugh. She is beautiful in <laughs> anything she wears. They could have honestly put her in rags, rags, and she would still be the most beautiful woman on screen. Um, and I stand by that. And honestly, if that's what you put on my gravestone when I die, <laughs> that is fine because I love her. Um, but no one on set had an iron. Mm. Every costume was so goddamn wrinkly. <laughs> it drove me insane. Just particularly funny given that they're in a simulation where they're supposed to like live these perfect yes. lives. Like why are they wrinkled? Uh, almost every dress that any character wore was wrinkly. The suits were perfection. I mm-hmm. thought that they did more than just plain black and white suit. It was very interesting. It was beautiful. They did put Harry Styles in white suspenders, which I thought was an interesting and wrong choice. Um, But, you know, good for them. (laughs) Um, But that fucking dress at the banquet, that pink dress, it is beautiful. It is also the most wrinkled dress I've ever seen in my entire (laughs) life. I mean, I do think she was, like, I guess, disheveled around that time. So maybe it was, like, a choice. I kind of thought that, too. But it also was, like just weird i don't yeah. know i, I did mean, not like it it is it is certainly strange for a simulation to be doing those things there's, there's a lot of weird things in that simulation it doesn't it's like it doesn't feel like a simulation it feels like a has, half-assed like attempt at making a simulation but not yeah. thinking about all the implications of, of creating a simulated world also she should have just gone in full neo and gone into like bullet time and like slowed down and shit she didn't yeah. access any of her matrix abilities i understood Where was that it? reference yes you've seen the matrix i haven't you're an avid viewer i am yeah it's a <laughs> number one matrix fan um uh, <laughs> it's my favorite movie of all time as it should be as it should be um okay do we want to have talk about the controversy. Oh my! I know you've been waiting God. for it. This I've is been you've been counting down one. the seconds until it's happened. Um. Okay. So, f- as a recap for everyone, um, there was a lot of controversy. Really? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounding. It's the first don't I'm worry, darling. Um. Yeah. It's not like I send you memes at least a yeah. hundred times a day about it's not it. Like it was like trending on Twitter for like for weeks on end. Still till to this day. Today it's there was new trending. stories coming out this morning. Basically, the long and the short of it, and if you think I'm missing stuff, it's because I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had originally hired Shia LaBeouf to play Jack, um, and then due to scheduling conflicts, he had to go and do another movie. Um, scheduling conflicts. Scheduling conflicts. <laughs> that conflict was uh, his trial. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Olivia Wilde sends Shia LaBeouf a video in which she is begging him to come back. (laughs) And during that, she refers to Florence Pugh as Miss Flo, which we'll talk about in a minute. (laughs) So then um, when Shia LaBeouf's um, essay allegations come forward, Olivia Wilde tries to save her own ass by saying, hey, this is why we fired Shia LaBeouf from the film (sighs) is because Florence Pugh and she puts all the blame on Florence and says Florence Pugh wasn't comfortable filming with him. So we had to fire him, which Shia LaBeouf. Yes. I do think that's like, I guess at least a half truth since in the video that she sent, it did seem like Florence Pugh was having issues with him. So that I'm, I'm assuming that part kind of was true, but then also the part that wasn't true is that they fired him because clearly she, the Shia LaBeouf left. She was begging him to come back. Right. Like that wasn't how that worked. So then, so then Shia LaBeouf comes forward and he shows, he has receipts, baby. <laughs> he has the video. He has the text messages. And honestly, in his message to her, he was very cordial um, and is talking about how he wishes nothing but the best for her. Um, but to stop spreading lies about him, he has enough shit going on right now that he needs to pay for and that he needs to serve time for. He does not need f- lies in on it as well (laughs) so then um olivia wilde breaks off things with her fiance who she has children with 
Yeah. Um, and immediately starts dating Harry Styles. Mm. And then guess who gets cast in the movie? Crazy. Oh, crazy. Oh, my goodness. Um, and one thing I do want to mention, we never mentioned this, but this just made me think. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen a lot of articles recently about... Uh, the sex scenes in <laughs> Don't Worry Darling and how like Florence Pugh was like, I know exactly which scenes are going to be screen grabbed and stuff like that, which I do think there's some validity there mm-hmm. that, sh- you know, she knows that her sex scenes are going to be the screen grabs that they're going to be used yeah. as soft corner porn. Mm-hmm. Um, and that she thinks that's sad because it's a beautiful project, which it is. It's v- visually very stunning. And I saw so many comments that were like, you're an actress. This is what you signed up for. And like, shut the fuck up First of all, I don't think it is bad criticism to say like, hey, I know you fucking incels and what you're not going to get from the movie. (laughs) All you're going to see is me getting eaten out by Harry Styles and that's what you're going to link on to. Yeah. Um, But overall, the sex was just like very mild. Yeah, it was was not not explicit. At all. I mean, I think at least um, Olivia Wilde, because I know that a big part of the weird like conflict there was like Florence Pugh was saying that and then meanwhile, Olivia Wilde was like, best part of the movie is the sex <laughs> she's like we really tried to like portray you know a woman's experience and i actually did i, I, I think, thought it was really yeah. good i mean I both of the scenes were about like her pleasure i also yeah. think they were like some of the most beautifully shot sex scenes ever so yeah. we'll give it the credit for that like honestly <laughs> honestly they could have been more explicit i'm just <laughs> I, we, we, <laughs> You're like we missed out. <laughs> Just Didn't kidding. see Harry Styles' no, I thought, ass, so I, I'm, I'm sad about I that. I think it was it was beautifully done. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So, <laughs> um, then Harry Styles gets cast. It's very weird. Um, and then Olivia Wilde like stops going to set, I guess. Yes. And like Florence Pugh had to finish directing the movie, which also could account for the weird yeah. shift in direction that we experienced in the movie. It's also just like, what kind of director doesn't show up to their own set I don't after really casting know. themselves as also a role in their own movie? Like, yeah, I just, I don't understand. What? Um, and they all start like hating each other. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Florence was like, I'm not going to the premiere. <laughs> and then she shows, she doesn't go to any of the interviews. And so Harry yep. Styles and Chris Pine have to do interviews together. Um, which is where the, this <laughs> movie it feels like a movie movie comes from uh florence Pugh shows up to the venice premiere looking absolutely impeccable please insert (laughs) a picture of florence Pugh at the fucking premiere because she is gorgeous the most beautiful woman i think i've said that enough yes florence if by some fucking chance you're watching which you never will but if you are watching i am not crazy okay you are just a very beautiful woman <laughs> and very talented and very ta- incredibly like, talented genuine, like, one of my favorite um, actresses and like, super ever. funny yeah just we're a big fan the best we're yeah. a big fan <laughs> big fans big fans um hot take we're big fans <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have guessed it we, it's not like we talk about our constantly never um anyways so she shows up, she looks stunning, and then Chris Pine, or uh, Harry Styles spits on Chris Pine. Probably seen it, but... Uh, you yeah. have to have seen it. And it's I everywhere. know I know everyone's trying to be like, that's not what happened. Listen. And soon it's, It looks like he did. I don't know if that's specifically what happened. I guess you wouldn't know unless you were there. But like, come on. Very that was just a lot. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. I and, guess that's like yeah. the big summary. This there was... m- morning, there was a new like article I saw that was released about it, talking about uh, the stuff that happened in like January and February. Wow. Because in, in January, apparently on set, Olivia Wilde and Florence Pugh got into a screaming <gasps> match. Um, and they were literally screaming at each other for like an extended period of time. About that's, what? Just like, I don't know. I can't even remember. I think it was like most of the other drama kind of all culminated okay. there, but it was like in front of everyone apparently. Um, and it was just like, they were just screaming at each other. And it was later like that day or that week that Florence P like talked to her agent and people and, like had it where she canceled all of her press tour appearances. And she's like, I'm not yeah. doing it. That was She didn't that promote any of the yep. movie. She Went didn't to, do had one. Like she had one parents. Instagram post about mm-hmm. it. And she posted, I think, was it today? I as think well? it was today. Yeah, and it, but that was, what was also interesting is this morning, 
morning, that article comes about uh, comes out about their screaming match, and then also today she posts this like Instagram thing of like her and Olivia Wilde she, like, a hugging emotionally after they finished filming, and this was only like a few weeks after this all this shit happened, yeah. and I'm like. What? Wait, what? What? But every time what? that Olivia Wilde would post something about mm-hmm. having to do with the movie, um, Florence Pugh would promote a different movie, mm-hmm. uh, which was hilarious. And then when they were getting her ready for the Venice premiere, um, her stylist team posted pictures of her looking stunning with the caption Miss Flo. Uh, and then her stylists all wore t-shirts that said Miss Flo. Bruh. It was hysterical. Oh my um, god. I don't dislike Olivia Wilde particularly, yeah. um, but if I'm going to be on someone's side Florence during this Pugh. controversy, it's Florence Pugh. Of course. Also, can I just say, I don't know if this is normal. Um, you'll have to explain this to me. But at the end of the credits where it said an Olivia Wilde production, mm-hmm. that gave me the ick. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. I, was like, I think it's just because she produced it. She and produced it and she directed it, but it's not like she has her own like LLC, does she? I mean, uh, it doesn't have to. It's pretty much if you're just like the main producer. It's like how Marvel things these days will now say a Kevin Feige production. It's not like that uncommon. I think Jordan Peele movies may do the same thing. It's generally just if a director gets like 100% like creative control and they're like producing. But she did it and- because Florence Pugh had to direct part of it. I mean, she it's had like, control. She just gave it. <laughs> she had she the control. There. She just didn't do anything with it. She wasn't there. Yeah. She wasn't. What is happening? Yeah, it's it was it's just it it's gave bizarre. me because yeah. I would I would understand if this was like a, a series of films or like a couple franchises of, or if this was like its own thing, but it was just like a one off film that's an Olivia Wilde production. It's it's interesting. The thing is, and I'll I have already said this once. I'll say it a million more times. Booksmart was phenomenal, and she is a phenomenal director. I think that's why she was given so much leeway with this film because everyone loved that. That was critically acclaimed. I haven't and seen it. it. We will watch that at some point. Olivia Wilde is a great director. I wrote in my notes uh, at some point during the film, Olivia Wilde is a genius. Also, I hate her. <laughs> Just because it's, I don't know. This film, it really, I mean, giving, it did give me the ick as well, I will say. Just yeah. because it felt like a vanity project. She it was, every, everything was like, she was directing, producing, Olivia Wilde production, directed by Olivia Wilde, written by Olivia Wilde, whatever the fuck, it's starring <laughs> Olivia Wilde. Like, everything was her. In not in a good way. Yeah. And the fact that she was also dating Harry Styles and cast him in it. And she had that whole thing going on. When he it, was not the right choice for the part. It's just, it's bizarre. They could have, even if it wasn't Shia LaBeouf, which fine. Um, Someone also, else could have been he's, He has essay allegations out against him. He does not need any more stardom. He has enough problems. You mean Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, yeah Shia yeah. LaBeouf. I was like, we're not talking about Harry Styles. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry Styles has his own problems yeah, that yeah. I won't get into in this time. It's just... I don't want the Harry Styles fans to come for me. The Stylers. The st- I, don't, I don't know if that's what they stylers. call themselves, but you they should. There? Stylers, hit me up. Absolutely. Don't hit me up, please. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> but no, like, it's just bizarre. Though. We could have had someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to fan cast because that would be terrible. But Tom Holland. Di- I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> Uh, Honestly, Jack, Chris Pratt? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't break my heart with Chris Pratt oh, again. God. I can't handle it. Okay, as we are kind of drawing a little bit to a close now, I do want to read a few lines and stuff that I thought were interesting or stood out to me, kind of okay. related to the theme, and then maybe we can go towards like quote of the movie stuff. I don't know if you have any picks for that. Um, uh, no, I did not write down a single quote. Okay. Oh, I have one that could potentially just sum up the movie. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I just wanted to... I don't know. I really liked a lot of the vibes of just like uh, lines like, we move as one. There's grace and symmetry as they're all doing the exact same thing as one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing the, the like ballet or dance or whatever. And then later they show the all the Marilyn Monroe clones just doing the same thing. Okay. And I, I found that was really interesting because it, it kind of adds into this whole like carbon copy, right. uh, you know, suburb life where it's like everyone has to be the exact same. You ha- This is the American standard of beauty. You all have to be like Marilyn Monroe. She sets the standard. Um, she. This is the ideal woman and you all need to fill the role as your housewife. This is the American housewife and you all have to fulfill it to completion. So what does that mean about me as a feminist if one of my notes uh, says I could stay there? Uh, 
Reevaluate. <laughs> it means capitalism's gotten you. <laughs> <laughs> it means I've been working too much recently. <laughs> yes. I mean, being a housewife isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, I think that's a you know a fun way to yeah. to live out stuff. But also, like, I think the issue is when when America pushes a specific ideal and like makes it so like you all have to be carbon copies. And I think Absolutely. suburbs in general, that's like the creepy thing with them. Is it's yeah. just like that's copies. why they're such an amazing like. Uh, setting for horror movies. No, absolutely. It's actually funny because I've been toying with like a short film script specifically surrounding like suburbs because that's one of the things that's actually the freakiest to me, like especially empty suburbs. Mm. Like they freak me out. And I, I had written that in here where I was like immediately I was like very good vibes, love suburb shit. There, it reminded me a lot actually of this uh, episode of, of the TV show Chuck, <laughs> which is, I think it's called like Chuck meets the suburbs or goes to the suburbs or something and they like live in the sh in the suburbs for like an episode and it's like everyone there is like a secret agent for this evil organization okay. and they all do very like kind of like how all of them like drove out in the car and did the exact same thing and like yeah. had the creepy like oh we're all housewives waiting for our husbands to leave all at the same time it was like almost identical to this Chuck episode like weirdly so okay. that's also like my favorite episode of Chuck because it like is all it's the suburbs. scary it is I've always like ever since I saw that episode suburbs have always creeped me out because it really is just like the copy pasted it all feels so fake mm -hmm. and especially like in this movie it's like you see all the housewives and all it's standing it's a very like, like white person thing <laughs> absolutely white people are fucking terrifying let's be real <laughs> I see a white person I turn the other way <laughs> I racially discriminate against white people exclusively <laughs> um, yeah so I, I don't know I really liked a lot of the thematic stuff there generally I don't know I, I that's why it also disappoints me a lot that the second half didn't do anything with that none of the twists or reveals really connected to that so much as this incel one the, the perfect wife but like it's if it's kind of going at like propaganda and these like uh, larger corporate ideals that we like pushed out we had like in the 40s and 50s we had tons of like America paid for so many commercials to like get people in neighborhoods and suburbs yeah. and like push this household as the ideal like they paid so much money to put this out there but then it all just becomes about like what this incel thinks and it's like I, I don't and I'm, I'm also using incel kind of wrong since they are in a relationship. Whatever. I don't really care. Uh, he's it, an incel. He, he, he gives incel energy. I, sorry. I <laughs> realized someone might energy. complain at me for that. So I was like, but I don't know. I just felt like they didn't do anything with those themes that they built up. And it was really disappointing because I thought they were really, really well established. I, I really artistic. I, it was really interesting to think on when they kept bringing these lines up or kept doing certain things. I was like, I was really fascinated by it. And I was very disappointed that they squandered it. Anyway. So if we're talking about potential uh, quotes of the movie, I don't have anything like super ridiculously funny or anything. However, the only thing that I thought like kind of just at the end of the movie ended up uh, summing up my feelings as the credits were rolling was just uh, Chris Pine asking, uh, why the hell are we here? Period. <laughs> no, that's it. That's the quote of the movie. Why the hell are we why? here? Why the hell are we here? No, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. My my quote for the movie is not actually a quote. Um, it is just uh, my notes that say, um, fucking do it. What the fuck? Kill him. Bitch ass motherfucker. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think our notes are both beautiful. We should publish these, really. I think if I, if I just made every one of my notes into like a, a thread on Twitter... Instant yeah. perfection. Perfection. It's, it's quite amusing. Yeah, <laughs> no. I, I, I literally wrote one of my notes in here like a tweet. I think at one point I wrote, uh, th uh, this has given some real midsummer vibes from a I guy wrote that who. Too. <laughs> I, I wrote from a guy who's only seen midsummer. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like that whole point. I'm literally just writing my notes like tweets at that point. Um, uh, no, I wrote that it was the antithesis of Midsummer because she left the cult. <laughs> Florence Pugh and getting gaslit by men. Just they go together like uh, things that go together well. Um, I do think that this was a, a feminist uh, piece of media. Though. Oh, absolutely. I, th I think it, it kind of failed and floundered at the end yes but especially and feel like it could have been really good yeah i mean that they're definitely the work was there i just think if they had pulled it through at the end it could yes. have actually been like a phenomenal film it just didn't yeah it, uh, uh, i think that. that's what's so frustrating is that mm. it really really could have been so good yep it, it's it's tragic honestly Okay. But, okay, so what would you, out of 10, give Don't Worry Darling? This is a challenge, because I have to actually think about this myself, because I don't know for um, myself. Um, 
Let me for think. what it is or what it could have been. For what, if it's, obviously for what it is. Okay. For what it is, I give it a six. Yeah. I think it was pretty good. Honestly? Um, for all the shit we gave it, I think there was a lot going for it. I think that if they would have not done the simulation and done uh, literally anything else, um, it would have been probably a nine for me. Yeah, honestly, I'm like, I'm leaning between either 5.5 or 6. Yeah. Just for simplicity's sake, so we have the same score and don't have to come up with an average, I'll say 6. I honestly, I mean, yeah. Because the thing is, you can't really give it a too negative of a score because especially from a, tech, yeah, from a technical standpoint, particularly, it's phenomenal. I think a lot of the stuff, there's a lot of really good shit in the first half. Uh, most of the stuff is good. It's just the second half of the script that carries it, like, yeah. brings it all down. Aside from just the second half of the script and maybe a couple of uh, Harry Styles like acting scenes, mm. it's just <laughs> solid. Really. Yeah, it's, it's a know? solid movie. Yeah, it, it, it bangs for the most part, yeah. minus the stuff that does not at all bang. Uh, I'm also not including the actual literal banging uh, we see on screen while Chris Pine watches, by the way. That was fucking hilarious. I just that want was... to say. I was also, I was like, stop, you just this, like say something. It was if you see hilarious. something, say this something. This whole movie, the one last thing I want to say on the movie, it was so funny. Unintentionally, I think a lot of the time, I, if the if I, only the rest of the audience was actually laughing, I would have literally been laughing out loud for most of the movie. Yeah. Like I had to hold myself back because no one else was laughing. So clearly I, I couldn't because we're in this giant theater with tons of people and I'm like, I'm not going to laugh there out loud. There's not that many people. <laughs> it's where I'm overselling it. But still, I'm not going to just laugh out loud. We were in a sold out. <laughs> it's sold out showing. Uh, it, it, I was hilarious. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Don't Worry Darling. Six out of ten. That's how we do it. What is our movie for next week? You are picking our next yes. film, so what's it going to be? Let me hear We it. are going to do Jennifer's Body. A I little bit of a throwback. Don't know what that is. Really. Um, it has Megan Fox in it. it. That's does. about it. That's all I know. And I've, uh, I actually have not seen it. Um, so this <laughs> is an excuse for me to watch it as well. Um, okay. But we are choosing Jennifer's Body. I've heard it is a beautiful piece of feminist literature that was, or not literature, my bad, uh, <laughs> cinema. A beautiful piece of uh, feminist cinema that was misconstrued mm. by a male audience uh, okay. to make it appear as if it is a bad movie. Interesting. It is not. So I think we're going to have a lot of really fun feminist discourse. She's going to hate the movie. If you hate the movie, you I mean, hate I'm, women. I'm, I'm interested to, to see how it kidding. is. I, I don't. I really don't know anything about it. So uh, if I was to say my initial impressions, I am interested because yes. I know nothing about it. But I think one of the most know, interesting things is um, as a child growing up uh, mm. when this movie came out, um, I thought it was like a skank movie, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I think, has to do with how it was marketed and the audience that partook of it not really knowing what it was about and mm. all of this i could be completely wrong on i don't yeah, know yeah. we'll find out next week all right for don't worry or <laughs> for don't worry darling Two, the sequel <laughs> for, for jennifer's, jennifer's body. body so we'll catch you all next week i hope you all enjoyed thank you so much for listening all of our links to our social medias as well as our personal social medias will be down in the description below if you're, if you're watching you're... on youtube and if you're listening on like spotify or apple Podcasts or anything else thank you for listening we love you also uh, if you sure want to listen, subscribe uh, make sure you subscribe so you know whenever we post. Love you. Thanks for bearing with us. Have a good rest of your day. Don't worry like Darling does. Don't worry, baby. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. <laughs> 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 All right. Have a great time. Have a great night, guys. Bye. Or day. Sleep well. Love good you. night to everyone except for Olivia Wilde. Just kidding. Good night, Olivia Wilde. Please don't sue us. <laughs> As if she's ever going to watch this. <laughs> uh, and fade to music.